Hey guys, my name is Jose Ocondo. I'm a Chattanooga-based web designer and web flow developer. And in this video, we're talking about sliders. Um, now, if you've ever used the Webflow slider before, um, you'll note that it's actually not integrated with the CMS. Um, now to clarify, you can add slides, add collection lists within those slides, and then filter the content to show only what you want based on which slide it is. Um, but the component itself isn't integrated with the CMS. So where that becomes an issue is, let's say you have a client who wants to have a flexible slider and they wanna have two to five slides appear depending on how much content they've uh, added to the CMS. Well, currently that's not possible uh, because when you use a slider, you have to have a predetermined number of slides. And, uh, and so um, if the client wants to add or subtract slides, they have to contact you so that you can go into the designer and uh, make those edits for them. So definitely not ideal. Well, um, on February 5th, Louis Bounier uh, published this article on the Webflow blog entitled How to Create a CMS Powered Slider. Um, I'll make sure to link the uh, article in the description below. Um, Louis, I hope you said I name, your name correctly, and I just want to thank you for thinking through the solution and then writing about it so that we could use it in our own projects. But Lewis's idea was essentially that uh, we could repurpose the newly released pagination feature in Webflow to kind of recreate what a slider does and have it linked to the CMS so that you can have as many slides as are in the CMS. So a really, really smart way, um, I never would have thought of it, um, to kind of use this pagination thing. Um, now there's uh, three drawbacks that we should talk about before we get into the tutorial and actually designing this Polaroid page. The first is that there's not a native system for letting the user know how many uh, slides there are and which one they're currently on. Uh, so if you've ever read UX or user experience articles on carousels or sliders, you'll know that um, one of the most important rules about sliders is that you have to let the user know we've got three slides and currently you're on number one, uh, so on and so forth. And so you, it's not that you can't have these indicators, it's, but it's that you have to kind of take the time to create them. And so it's just a little bit of a drawback that it's not a native uh, element. The second is that um, sliders and pagination work completely differently. So the way that sliders work is that uh, the three slides are actually sitting side by side and the ones that are not in the viewport are just hidden. Um, when you click next, the browser shuffles the next slide into view uh, by sliding it to the left or right. Um, but pagination doesn't do that. What pagination does is it reloads the page entirely with the new content displayed. So take a look up here at the address bar. You notice this is polaroid.webflow.io. When I click next, the new slide uh, goes refreshes and you'll notice that now there's an extra slug um, in addition to the URL. And that is the, um, this new page being reloaded by the pagination system. Um, you'll notice that the indicator dot is now at the rightmost. Uh, now it's in the center, now it's in the left. Um, but anyways, reloading is a little bit of an issue. And uh, if you have a lot of content on your site and it loads, um, there's a little bit of lag, uh, you have to be careful about that. So it's not a solution that works uh, for every uh, slider problem, if you will, um, but it, it definitely can help if you need a little bit more flexibility with your slider. The last thing I'll mention is that um, uh, currently with pagination, whenever you um, load new content, um, the website will load at the very top of the page. Uh, right now, that's not an issue because we're already at the top. Um, but uh, Webflow did release um, on their forum uh, a solution to that using a little bit of custom JavaScript. I'm not going to cover that in this episode, and I'm not going to worry about it since um, uh, we're already at the top of the website here. But there is a way to overcome that problem if you're experiencing that. All right, enough chatting about <laughs> what we're going to do. Let's actually do it. Let's jump into Webflow and start designing this slider. Alrighty, so here we are in the designer. And just for the sake of time, I went ahead and added all of our assets into the assets folder um, in the uh, body uh, tag, all pages. I set our typography, so our font's gonna be Neue Haas Grotesque. 
Um, and we've already got our colors laid in as well. So um, all the different colors we're using as part of the Polaroid brand. And I'm gonna get started just by adding a section. Um, always make sure you give this the correct uh, tag, HTML tag. And we're just gonna call it section header. And then the first thing we're gonna add is a div block and a paragraph. And this is gonna be for that little notification bar um, that went uh, above the navigation. Um, so we'll just call it notification bar. And a lot of um, a lot of e-commerce folks really love to have these things. Um, it's like an extra call to action. Um, so with notification bar selected, I'm gonna give this eight pixels of padding. Um, I'm gonna make sure that the color is, oops, okay, I can't set the color here. So I'll have to give uh, this a class of notification text so that we can make the color black. Um, it's gonna be 14 pixels, so 14 over 16 M, and it's gonna be uh, center aligned. All right, and I think that's all we have to do for now. Let's go ahead and add our link. And um, uh, browsers always add this blue and underline uh, whenever you add a link. So we just need to um, inline link, give this a little bit of a class so that uh, we can revert this back to our color. And I'm gonna leave the uh, underscore there um, so people know it's a link. All right, next up is uh, with our section header selected, um, I need a nav bar. Let's pull that in. And we're gonna do a couple of things just to customize this. We're actually gonna have uh, two nav menus and we're gonna get rid of the container and actually not use a container this time. So I'm just gonna delete that um, uh, paste a new nav menu and there we go. Okay, so with the nav bar selected, uh, first of all, let's turn um, the color to black. Let's grab our nav links. I'm gonna just paste it in here and delete the one without uh, the CSS class. And then we can make our nav links white. Whoops, um, accidentally styled the background. There we go. And let's go ahead and add our logo, um, pull in the Polaroid logo. Okay. And uh, we're gonna use Flexbox within the nav bar um, to go ahead and send um, all of this stuff to where we want it to go. So by using the space between, um, okay, let me make sure everything's in the right spot here. I need to move brand to be, uh, first there. Okay. And then we have to do a little bit of messing with um, the kind of like flex child um, styles. So we're going to call this middle nav, middle, <laughs> middle nav, set it to expand or grow if possible, and set the uh, alignment to center align. And then instead of do the same thing with these, we're actually going to give these um, so uh, nav menu, um, nav menu fixed, fixed width, I guess we could call it. And we're gonna do the same thing over here, brand. Nav menu fixed width. And then um, I think just uh, from messing around with this before, um, basically I'm looking to uh, over here in the right hand corner of the logo, just to see kind of like where uh, 140 is like almost exactly. So I'll just do 150. And basically what that's doing is since these two elements are 150 and this is set to expand, uh, that lets me know that content is exactly in the middle of the page. And that's what we want. Uh, let's do a little bit more styling. Um, let me figure out uh, what topography we're using here. And this is size 14. All right, so we can come down here and do the same thing that we did with um, 
the disclaimer text at the top and um, I think everything else looks correct. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and instant cameras, add the correct links, new cameras, vintage cameras. Instant film, I think it was. And oh, instant film was on the left hand side and accessories. Okay. Okay, so I could move this over here to the left. And there we are. Okay. With this one, um, I'm going to add a link block and delete contact. And here's where we can add um, all of our icons. So with the link block, I'm going to call this um, icon wrapper. And there is 25 pixels of spacing. We can't actually do half of that because that would include a 0.5. So we'll just do 12 pixels of padding on either side. And uh, what that means, let's go ahead and add it to the um, top and bottom as well. And then what that means is that if I add three more, uh, they now have 24 pixels of padding between them. But the nav bar, um, just from designing <laughs> this earlier, I know that there's um, 60 pixels of padding on either side. Alrighty. And then let's change uh, these to the correct icons. So uh, I think the next one is the profile one. And the last one is our shopping cart. All right, the last thing we need to do to uh, fix our um, nav bar here is set everything to middle align. And I think um, there's supposed to be 20 pixels of padding up here, uh, and it's not quite giving us that, so we'll do about 10. All righty. Um, let's continue. We'll finish up this header section and then I'll take a little bit of a break um, just to reset my voice. Uh, but the next thing that we're going to do is add a div block and we'll just call this um, a headline wrapper. And the first thing we're going to do is make our color black. All right. Then we're going to add a div block and it will be our container element. And our container, I want it to be 80% of the width. Um, and what else do I want to do? Set the margins to auto so that it's centered uh, horizontally on the page. You can't see it right now, because uh, but here's the left edge and here's the right edge, so we know that it's centered. Um, let's go ahead and add a heading just so that we can see it a little bit. <laughs> um, okay, and then with the headline wrapper, what I want to do is uh, give this a little bit of padding. So there's 40 pixels of padding below and about 100 pixels of padding up top. All right, so 100 and oops, I think this was 40. All righty, where did my, oh, there's my heading. Okay, so, um, each one. So with the headline wrapper selected, um, I'll change the typography color to white and that way we can see our heading. And then we just got to copy this. And then which, the way we get that yellow is we add a what's called a span and then we can um, create a class called yellow text and use our uh, Oops, I did the background again. I'm still getting used to the new uh, style um, panel. Okay. And then we're going to add a piece of text above it. Um, copy this. Actually, you know what? I remember I ended up switching my mind and I gave this a H2 heading. And I like that a little better than what I had in my design. Okay. So, uh, all right, so 
we pretty much finished the header and so now that all that's left is the um, <laughs> the slider because this picture will actually be part of the slider um, but that is going to take up the majority of the rest of the tutorial so let me take a quick break and I'll be back in just a second all right we're back um, before I move on I forgot to mention that I did set the style for these headings um, actually totally built out this website before I did this video just so that um, <laughs> I'd have a um, easier time walking you guys through it and so I forgot to mention that I styled these so all you do is add your h1 go into your selector do all h1 headings and um, you can see that here I styled it with a, a bold font weight 4.5 m so that's 4.5 times the body font size which is 16 um, a line height of one has a little bit of tighter letter spacing just to give it that grotesque font look um, so uh, so I just wanted to mention that before we move on all right so now let's get to what we're all really here for which is creating our CMS integrated slider all right so um, with my section header selected I want to add a collection list and I want to make sure I connect it to my sliders collection um, so just really quick, uh, let's go into the CMS and I want to show you the first slide here. Uh, essentially, there's one, two, three, four, five, six fields. One is the name and that's going to be the label for our H2, the supporting copy that goes below the H2, um, the link URL for the link below the supporting copy and the label for that URL. And then the slide number, this is probably um, one of the more important fields It's going to tell us uh, in which order these slides should appear. So keep a note that this is new cameras and it's followed by new cameras two and new cameras three. <coughs> All right, so um, the first thing I wanna do really quickly is this is our slider collection wrapper. And I wanna give it a background of white. And the way that we get our pagination is if we go, uh, if we're in any of these items here in the collection and go to the item settings, we can click on paginate items and make sure that only one item per page is selected. All right, perfect. The next thing I wanna do is add a div block and give it our container class so that the extremes of uh, the container match up with the extremes up here. All right, and then next, I want to give this a slider container combo class so that I can make it a flex box. And then I'm going to add uh, two flex children. So slider flex child. Copy and paste that inside of the container. And then make sure these are set to expand. And we now have our two column grid that we need. All right. The next thing I want to do is let's go ahead and add some of our content. So we're going to need a div block uh, for our slider indicators. We're going to need a heading, which is going to be an H2. We're going to need a paragraph below it. And we're going to need our text link. All right, wonderful. So with the H2, I can click on this little gear and say get text from. And remember we're using name as kind of like the label for, for that. A paragraph, I'm gonna get text from supporting copy. And now we've got that. And then this is our link. So we're gonna get the URL from sliders and the label, uh, link label. Um, so obviously I did some work in putting the information into the CMS, but it wasn't that fast. Like that was so incredibly fast. I've got uh, most of my um, stuff laid out so far. All right, let's go ahead and style our link. Let me call this text link. Um, I know that there is 20 pixels of uh, margin above it. And so I have to set this to inline block to be able to um, give this a little bit of styling. And I know that it is black. So I'll set that to black. Take off the underscore. Um, it's going to be bold. Just a little bit of letter spacing since the boldness kind of, kind of makes it a little tough to read. And then we're going to give it a bottom border of two. 
and we're gonna give it a padding of five just to help move that bar down a little bit. We're also gonna give it a hover state so that on hover, that bottom bar is gonna to turn to our yellow. And we wanna make sure that we add a transition um, with a border color is what we're looking for uh, so that when we roll over it, it's got that nice transition. Let's do the same thing for up here. Um, oh, I guess we did that already. Okay. Um, next thing I wanna do is give this some padding. So by clicking on this, I know that it's got 80 pixels of padding below. So let's do that here. And there is approximately, this is gonna be uh, absolutely positioned. So I actually need to figure out what the spacing is to the dots. 228, let's just round up to, or round down to 225. <coughs> All right, we're gonna call this slider indicator wrapper. And then add um, a slider dot. We're gonna make it eight eight and let's give it a background color of our gray all right now if i click off of here i'll notice that it's actually a square um, let's give this a little bit of margin bottom um, and the reason for that is if i go down to radius and i use 50 percent that'll give me a perfect circle now that only works if it's a perfectly square element otherwise you just get a weird oval Okay, so let me copy and paste that three times. Uh, whoops, and the reason they're stacking is because they're set to block. And they actually need to be inline blocks so that they stack next to each other. Oh, I'm on the wrapper. Inline block. And then let's give it like, um, let's try eight pixels. That looks good. All right, and then let's get a, an active dot going, active dot. And the active dot will be a background of yellow. Alrighty, so let's copy that twice. And then let's move these over, uh, oh geez. It's probably gonna be easier in the layers list here. <sighs> okay. And then this part's gonna be a little bit tedious, but we're gonna use conditional visibility to activate these dots. So with the first one, I want it to be uh, element is visible when slide number equals one. And with the gray, I want it to be visible when um, slide number does not equal one. So you can kind of see where I'm going. I'm gonna do the same thing with these other dots. Slide number equals two. Um, slide number does not equal two. And then the last two here, slide number equals three. And um, slide number does not equal three. So now I've got three dots. So if I just preview this and hit uh, next on here, you'll notice that um, it, is, uh, it is going back and forth. All right, the next thing I wanna do is actually order these correctly. So I'm gonna hit sort order, slide number, smallest to largest. And um, now if I go to one of three, you'll notice that the first gold, first yellow dot there is indicated. All right, whew, we're close. Let's work on our pagination button here. Uh, we'll call this pagination wrapper. And the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I need to get the slider collection wrapper and set its positioning to relative so that I can absolutely position the pagination wrapper to it. So, uh, oh, what was that? Absolute and it's gonna be left. Awesome. 
And um, since I know that this is 80% of the browser, that means there's 10% of white space on this side. So all I have to do is do 10% over here. And then I'm actually gonna use hard pixels, like, I don't know, 400 pixels or something uh, to do that. And then I'm gonna position it right in line with this. And if I come over here, oops, um, this is about 111 pixels. Let's just do 100. Um, so if I do 324, um, that'll be perfectly positioned uh, from the top there. Okay. Actually, you know what? I wonder if I set this to auto and this to like 30. It's better to position it like that, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Um, because if this paragraph goes down to one line, it would mess up the positioning of this. <coughs> All right, sorry, just taking a little drink there. Um, let's get rid of the text block. Let's call this icon arrow and give it positioning of 24 by 24. Oh, geez, I messed both of those up. And then let's get the next button and we'll call it pagination button. And I just know these sizes from having done the design earlier, but it's 52 by 52. And then we're gonna use flex uh, to align everything in the middle. And then I think the arrow has a little bit of margin I need to get rid of. All right, great. Then um, with the pagination button, we're gonna get rid of that bottom border I guess it has border all the way around it. The background is actually white, and then it has a box shadow of 180 degrees. And what that means is that the light source is coming from up here, shining exactly straight vertically down. A distance of seven, a blur of 14, and um, just a 12% um, transparent black. And then I think we have a little bit of margin that I don't want here, but I do want a 15 here. All right, and then let's take off um, let's take off these guys so I don't want it to mess with our padding in any way. And then it should have a corner radius of eight. All right, great. And then if I go um, to preview mode, go to next, I can go ahead and style this one as well. There we are. So that is the left hand side of our slider. Um, so we're building it, we're building it. All right, next comes the uh, Polaroid photo. Um, so I'm gonna name this right child. And we're gonna add a diff block. We'll call it Polaroid frame. Then we're gonna add another div block and call it a Polaroid image. Now I'm gonna be using viewport width and heights to see if we can get um, kind of like a responsive image here. So let's do a 35VW, 35VW. It's gonna give us a nice square image. Um, let's add a background image Make sure it's cover, set to middle, do not tile. And then since we're in our collection, I can get background image from our CMS collection. Then with the Polaroid frame selected, I can add a uh, 3VW. Uh, let's do 2VW. Um, and then it's going to be 8VW on the bottom, uh, just because um, those Polaroid frames have that little bit of extra um, white space on the bottom there. Okay, and then we need to make sure its background is white. White. 
Okay, and then with the right child selected, let's you let's take off that 225 pixels of padding, and let's actually use negative margin uh, to pull this up um, to be in line with this. Looks like I'm a little too aggressive. Aggressive. Let's try minus 250. A little too much. Minus 245. And that's uh, pretty much perfect. Okay. Um, next is I want to make sure this doesn't get too tall. So let's give this a max width of 50 VH and a max height of 50 VH. You'll notice that there's a little too much spacing on the right hand side here. And that is because with the right child, I need to make um, this flex as well, a line in the middle and to the top. And then we need to give this a little bit of shadow. Um, so we're going to go to box shadow, distance of 50, blur of 60, 180. And it's going to have a transparency of 14%. All right, so there we go. Um, all right, so let's test out the responsiveness of this a little bit. Okay. Um, not too bad. Um, maybe what I'd like to do is instead of having it centered, move it to the right. Okay, looking good. The next thing we need to work on is our uh, rainbow bars up here. <laughs> um, so let's do this. Let's add a new div block right above Polaroid frame. And we'll call this, um, Polaroid wrapper. And we're going to make the Polaroid wrapper position relative. Then we're going to add a new div block and call it rainbow wrapper and make its positioning absolute. Uh, position absolute. We're going to set it to full. It's going to be display flex and everything's going to be in the middle top. And then we can add our first rainbow bar so you can see uh, kind of where we are. Rainbow bar. And it's going to be a width of 10 pixels and a height of 300 VH. So just absurdly tall. And background red. Okay. And then we're going to use uh, negative margin to do minus 100 VH. That just ensures that uh, this is going up top. No matter how this responds, it's going to be visible. Um, but we do want to take the section header and make its overflow hidden, which we already did. And that means that this red bar is not going to go outside of our um, section header. So I think if I go to preview, uh, no, I guess we're still seeing it. Okay. Um, so with the uh, Polaroid frame, I need to make it. I need to give it a Z index, so that we can get it. We can get it to display above um, relative above the rainbow bar. So there we go. And then I just want to make sure. Um, everything else is looking good. Okay. Let's copy and paste this to, whoops. Did I do that right? One, two, three, four, five. I think it's five. Okay. And then uh, the next one is orange. This part's a little bit tedious in terms of just uh, changing these colors. I 
think the next one is green. And then the last one is blue. Nice. Okay, so the great thing is because we made this uh, positioning absolute and it's referencing the um, container for the Polaroid photo, the, that rainbow bar is always going to follow um, our Polaroid. So super nice. All right, so I think we're actually done with um, all of our laying out. And if I think we go to preview, um, our slider is working. But it's feeling a little flat. It's feeling like, um, uh, like usually when you use the slider component, there's uh, there's actually some sliding going on. So I, I want to use um, animation to make this feel a little bit more like um, this is actually sliding into place. Um, the other key thing to know is that since, um, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, since the pagination is actually reloading the page, we can trigger the animation by using the page load trigger. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to animation. And uh, uh, I already did these, so let me redo these again. Um, and we're gonna go to page trigger, page load, start an animation. Um, I'm gonna delete this and do a new timed animation called slider. And essentially what I'm gonna do is take these three elements and move them to the right um, give them a opacity of zero, and then when the page loads, they're going to move back into place with opacity of one. All right, so move. Um, we're going to say 50 pixels to the right and opacity of zero. And we need to make sure that set as initial state is set. And then we're going to do the same thing with the bottom two elements. Move 50 um, opacity of zero, move 50, opacity of zero. All right, next, we're going to move, start moving these in. So move, X is going to be zero because it's moving back to its original state. And it's going to go back to 100% opacity. And let's go ahead and give these a uh, ease um, so that they look okay. So if I just kind of preview that, it's kind of sliding into place. All right, then I need to take the text link and do the same thing, but this is gonna take 0.75 uh, seconds instead of 0.5. Okay, and then we're going to take the text link and do the same thing. Um, go back to zero, but this one's going to take one second. And opacity one. And then if I grab them all, I can just go ahead and set the easing to ease. All right, let's check that out and see if it worked. Uh, whoops, something's off. Um, apparently, I grabbed text link twice by accident. Okay. So let's get rid of that one. And it needs to be paragraph. This one is 0 0.75. There we go, okay. So that worked. And then another thing I'm gonna do is, I wanna give the Polaroid, kind of like how, um, you know, when you snap the Polaroid, it's gray at first, and then it kind of like slowly reveals itself. I wanna have that same effect. So let's go ahead and do something. We're gonna have our Polaroid image here. We're gonna set its positioning to relative. We're gonna add a div block, make its positioning absolute and Let's rename it a Polaroid overlay. 
overlay, there we go, and give it a background color of gray. Okay, then if we go back to our um, page load, go to the slider, then with the Polaroid over selected, I can um, make the opacity go down to zero in, let's say one, one second. And uh, ease. Okay. And then we can use a little bit, well, let's try that out actually. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a delay. So let's do 0.5 linear and let's give it a 0.5 delay. Just so you see the black for a little bit before it comes in. The delay was a little bit too much. Um, 0.75 seconds. Okay. Yeah, I like that better. And then with the Polaroid image, we can give this like a um, little bit of a blur filter. So it has a blur of three pixels and then down here, filter, blur is zero. Okay, and then let's try that out. Yeah, it just kind of like comes into focus a little bit. Okay. Now, um, I don't think it'll work if we do this, but uh, let's go ahead and publish our project. And so now this is the new version. Um, so now if I go to the next one, it should work on all of the slides. Okay. The last thing I wanna do is just to give the card a little bit more dynamism. Is that a word, dynamism? I don't know. Um, let's go ahead and give the Polaroid frame a little bit of, um, of a, a mouse over effect. So I go to page trigger. Um, I want to have section header selected, mouse move in viewport, play mouse animation. I'm going to delete that. And what can I call it? A Polaroid card animation. Then if I select the Polaroid frame, um, basically what's thing is it's looking where the mouse is. So uh, I guess I have to set some of these settings first. So we're gonna use rotate. And it's looking at the mouse where it is in the, let me go to live preview. And if you look where this little green tag is, is that green? You can see as I move to the left, uh, that it's moving from zero to 100. So with the rotate, I want it to rotate a little bit to the left, um, but that's way too much. You have to be really subtle about this. So just like minus three and maybe like one degree on the right hand side. And then essentially the same thing here. So rotate, um, I want it to rotate up a little bit. Um, so this needs to be minus three and this needs to be three degrees. Stop. I can't get rid of that little space, I don't know why. Oh my word. Okay, here we go. And then one thing I forgot to do is with the section header selected. Yeah, let's do section header. Um, I need to give this a, under the transforms, I need to give it a children perspective. You can really set this to anything I think. We're just gonna do 1000 pixels. And that kind of uh, engages the 3D engine. So um, as I start rolling around in the viewport, 
this is going to start uh, responding. I think I have the y-axis backwards, um, so let me fix that. So this should be 3, and this should be negative 3. Let's do 2. I feel like the 3 was a little bit much. Okay, yeah, just a nice light animation, not nothing too, um, uh, nothing too like big or abrupt. Um, just to kind of like give the Polaroid just a little bit more of like that's a real thing. All right, and then um, let's publish that. And if I hit refresh. Uh, unless I am mistaken, we're done. Um, so if I click on right, we're advancing to the next slide. Our Polaroid is having a little bit of a 3D transform. I go to the next one, another 3D transform. So it's doing exactly what it needs to be doing. We're seeing the indicator dots. Um, so, so that is um, a really fun, quick way to create a CMS integrated slider. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, some of the fun things we did with the CMS, with uh, animations, and with the slider. Um, if you enjoyed it, I um, uh, ask that you would consider subscribing to my channel so that um, I just have your guys' support and encouragement to keep doing videos like this. If you hit the little bell, you'll get notified when I do future videos. Um, I, I'm hoping to do another video on uh, animating icons with After Effects uh, in Webflow. Um, so if you're interested in, in seeing that, let me know in the comments below. And I'll make sure to um, have the articles that I previously mentioned in the description below as well. Anyways, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next time.